Analysis Report Afghan Summer Brings Reversals and Doubts It's been a summer of setbacks in Afghanistan with rising casualties, a divisive election, and growing public doubts about the war in the United States and among key allies. The year began with President Barack Obama promising a new beginning for an old war. Long ignored and underfunded by the last U.S. administration as the spotlight fell on the conflict in Iraq, the diversion. As part of a new emphasis, Obama ordered 21,000 troops to Afghanistan and has replaced the top U.S. commander with General Stanley McChrystal, who has unveiled a strategy shifting the focus from just killing insurgents or militants to theoretically protecting Afghan civilians. At the same time, the administration has promised to build up the capabilities of the corrupt Afghan government, accelerate the training of Afghan soldiers and police, and help the Afghan leadership combat corruption and the growing drug trade. Effort appears to falter. So months later, the American effort appears to be faltering and hopes that the Afghan presidential election would produce a leader with a strong national mandate have been cast into doubt by allegations of widespread fraud in the August 20th voting or balloting. Early returns point to a possible runoff between the President Hamid Karzai and Farman and former Foreign Minister Abdullah Abdullah probably or possibly in October. Final returns are not expected before the middle of next month, but data or figures released Wednesday show Karzai leading with 44.8% of ballots, counted to 35.1% for Abdullah. The current president needs more than 50% to avoid a runoff. Many ballots from Karzai's southern strongholds have yet to be counted. And it is possible that the current president may yet surpass the 50% mark and claim a first round victory. But even if he does, however, fraud allegations or corruption, not only from Abdullah but some of the other 34 candidates, have so poisoned or tainted the political atmosphere that it will be very difficult to bring together social and political groups opposed to the Taliban or the insurgents or the militants or whatever have you call them. And at the worst, the controversy may trigger street riots and fracture or splinter the country along ethnic lines. The image of Afghan politicians squabbling or arguing in Kabul at a time when American and other international soldiers are dying on the battlefield is grimly reminiscent of the darkest days of the Iraq War when political stagnation in Baghdad helped turn U.S. public opinion against the last administration's policy in the 2006 congressional elections. Nearly or at least 300 international troops have been killed in Afghanistan this year and the toll is rising rapidly. The war is intensifying, making this the deadliest year since the conflict began in 2001. So yes, this war is going on nine years now. So once again, how much longer will it take to win this war? And also again, when will they know that they have won? And what exactly is there to win? Corruption is rife in Afghanistan. In the government. 
No sign of retreat for insurgents. At the same time, insurgents, insurgents, our militants show no sign of shrinking from the fight. With U.S. and British troops focusing operations in Helmand Province, the Taliban have quietly tightened their grip in neighboring Kandahar, where a vehicle bomb attack Tuesday killed at least 41 people and leveled at least a whole city block and a brazen assault that appeared directed at foreign interests in the city. In other words, the bombs were getting bigger and bigger, more and more deadly. Taliban intimidation kept many Afghans from the polls in the south last week, despite major U.S. and British military operations aimed at making the boat secure. U.S. officials have made little effort to gloss over the problems, perhaps mindful of the backlash that stung the last U.S. administration after years of false optimism in Iraq. The support for the war is wavering, breaking down. Last weekend, Admiral Mike Mullen Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff described the situation in Afghanistan as serious and deteriorating. And he told CNN that I don't think that threat's going to go away. And all this comes as public support for the war, both in the United States and Britain, is starting to waver. A recent Washington Post ABC News poll found that just over half the respondents said the war in Afghanistan was not worth fighting. Perhaps, perhaps it never really was worth fighting. And what was the rationale for going into Af Afghanistan originally? To look for Osama bin Laden? Or to capture him or whatever? So how much longer would it take to get Osama? Anyway, a survey last month in Britain found that 58% of the respondents believe the war is unwinnable. Again, 58% of the respondents believe the war is unwinnable, and 52% want British troops withdrawn immediately. So all these negatives are coming together as General McChrystal is preparing to submit a report to the President next week that may include a recommendation for thousands and thousands of more troops. How many troops do they need? But sending more troops to an unpopular meat grinder war could be a hard sell among many of Obama's fellow Democrats. They are starting to tire of this unending war. Senator Russ Feingold, a Wisconsin Democrat who supported the U.S. move into Afghanistan following the, following the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, now says the U.S. needs a timeline for its departure from the country. In other words, U.S. troops can't stay there forever. Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio has expressed deep frustration with the Afghan government and said he is concerned with this war not last a whole lot longer. We've got to begin seeing changes, Brown said. We don't stay forever if they don't meet the goals they need to meet. The Afghan government has become corrupt and the Afghans don't trust it. And that is not a good sign. So, in effect, this war could very well be unwinnable. And it's intensifying. It appears to be getting worse. And that's not good either. And once again, there's something much more going on here. Something much bigger. And these are more signs of the end times transition days. Transition is ongoing day by day all around the world.